So, do you want to know how you can conquer your needle fear with the game? Then please watch this video. My name is Elisabeth Huisnetveld. I'm a researcher at Tilburg University, and I wanted to find out how I could help people who suffer from needle fear using AI and games. So this is quite a prevalent problem. More than 60% of kids suffer from this, but also among adults, it's quite you know, normal to suffer from needle fear. But on average, one in three people actually having this problem. And the fear itself is not only very annoying, but you might also suffer physical consequences, such as nausea, dizziness, sweatiness. And in the end, your fear might become worse and worse, and this might even cause you to avoid necessary healthcare, maybe even treatments. So actually, this problem is also very adverse for healthcare professionals, because a, a blood draw, which normally might take three minutes, can actually last up to 20. And this is also a very costly problem. So what have we made to sort of uh, solve this problem? Well, it's a game. It's an AI-driven serious game that can help you prevent or conquer your needle fear. Now you might wonder how this all started. Well, that was a few years ago when I became a scientist at San Quinn. And I saw donors faint there. And actually, more importantly, I saw donors faint that really said that they felt nice even 30 seconds before. And this is part of what makes this such a complicated problem. Because people are very unaware or unable to report how they are doing before it escalates. This is a very difficult problem to prevent or to sort of interfere on in time. And this triggered something in me. So how can we measure sort of these processes that have this very uh, adverse outcome when they are still in a beginning stage? And this uh, inspired our FAINT project. So the goal of the FAINT project is to develop an artificial intelligence algorithm that is able to predict fear or what we call vasovagal reactions, such as the dizziness, based on your face and preferably based on video imaging of your face. And the goal is that we want to be able to measure what is going to happen when you have your needle related procedure while you are still in the waiting room. How did we do it? So we ran the study at San Quinn, the National Blood Bank. We invited three types of donors to participate in our study. And the first are very versed, you know, well-rounded donors who've donated quite a few times without any issues. So with these donors, we know that they're unlikely to suffer from fear or vasovagal reactions during their donation. But we also invited donors who had felt unwell at their previous donation. And we know from research that if you've had such an adverse event at the last donation, you're more likely to suffer one again at your current donation. And also we know that first-time donors are more likely to feel either anxious or that they feel dizzy. So we invited these donors for just a regular blood donation. And what we did is we filmed them with both a regular digital camera and an infrared thermal imaging camera. And we followed them throughout the whole donation procedure. Now, if you know, if, if you, you, maybe you've been through this or maybe you haven't, but you come in and you have to sign up, you have to fill out a donor health questionnaire, you go to donor physician. This all takes place before the actual blood donation. Then you're put in a chair, the needle is inserted, the blood donation starts, at the end, the needle is extracted. And we know that these are quite, yeah, the most uh, anxious inducing events in a blood donation. And afterwards, you sit in the donor cafe. So during the recordings, we also asked donors how they were feeling. Are you feeling dizzy, weak, stressed, nervous? And we asked this on a scale uh, of one to five during all these stages that I just explained. And now the idea is that we want to find out who felt yeah, dizzy or anxious during the donation based on what happened in the waiting room. And as you can see, donors are less likely to experience needle fear than people in the regular um, population, because of course, they already made the conscious decision to come to a blood bank. However, you can see also a lot of variation, and that especially at time point four, for example, when the needle goes in, this is seen as quite yeah, an anxious uh, inducing event. And this is where most people feel dizzy. So we were curious to know what type of data could best predict what would happen during the donation. So we used the different data streams, both the infrared thermal imaging data and the regular uh, video data. And we used also different ways of analyzing the data. 
for example, with the infrared thermal imaging, we try to extract, extract different regions of the face that we know from research are very important. However, from the video data, we also wanted to see if maybe facial expressions could really explain uh, or predict how people are feeling. And we also wanted to use deep learning, so not really looking at what, might, what it might be before, but just feeding all the data uh, to an algorithm and seeing what comes out of it. So let's first look at what actually happens if you just ask people how they're feeling. Because we ask people, how are you feeling now at the beginning of the donation? And you can see that um, the performance is okay. Actually, an artificial neural network worked the best. And it's good to know that an F1 score, the higher is the better, so to up until one. But for us, it's also important that we have a high recall score, because that means that we are well able to get the donors um, to, or to find the donors that will actually experience a positive recall response. Good to know is that we also uh, actually measured some, measured some personality uh, questionnaires. So we asked people, how afraid are you of pain? How afraid are you of fear? Like, um, are you very sensitive to what happens in your, to what happens in your body? Uh, and how do you regulate emotions normally? So here you can see that actually this is also quite a nice predictor, uh, additional, uh, to see who might experience a positive vagal reaction. If you look at the facial muscles, um, the scores are approximately the same. Uh, and again, the, the recall score is quite high, so that's quite important for us in our game. The infrared thermal imaging, again, same, uh, approximately the same results. So we would have loved to see higher F1 scores, for example, but you know, for a data set that was quite unbalanced, which is quite um, impactful in, a, in an analysis like this, these scores are quite nice. However, the best benefit we get if we really look at just the video responses. And interesting, we just need like 25 frames to quite accu accurately predict how people uh, are going to uh, respond to the blood donation. And of course, throughout all of these studies, we are using different techniques. We want to fuzz out more what really underlies these predictions. We want to see if we can improve the predictions. Um, maybe we can even uh, use combinations of it that we want, once ask a donor to fill out a personality questionnaire, that we also ask how they are doing prior to the donation, and that we use this video imaging. So this is still to come. Uh, and also we want to know where in the face can we find most uh, information. And this is usually around these areas. Now we get back to the game, because this is nice, but how are we actually going to implement this in the game that might help people? So we implemented this, uh, one of these versions, into our INR game. And what it does, it records your face. Well, it doesn't record it, but it looks at your face. And it constantly tries to assess how big the risk is that you might get a vasovagal reaction or that you might start to get fearful. And it's good to know this is still while, while you're feeling fairly OK. And the algorithm adjusts the weather in a game. And you as a player, you can just play. It is a nice game. There's no needles in it. But if the weather starts to turn bad, if it starts to rain or snow, you have to try to make the sun shine again. Now, if you do something that works for you, um, and this might be different for everyone, you will see immediately that the game will start to react to this and it will uh, start to get sunny again. And this is a very powerful stimulus for your brain to really find out what works for you to conquer your needle fear. And of course, developing a game by itself is quite complicated. So we've gone through several iterations, several uh, prototypes, and this is the previous to last prototype actually that we tested. And people really liked the game and they really wanted to play it. And we were also nominated for the Dutch Game Awards. Now we are at the next phase of research. We not only want to improve the algorithm by uh, tuning it, but we also want to collect more data, maybe with different groups. And of course, we want to know to what extent it works for patients to really feel better during either a blood donation or a blood draw or a vaccination. So we are right now going to test the game at not only uh, blood banks, but also hospitals, phlebotomy centers and dentists. Now to sum up, why did we want to make a game like this? Well, first of all, we wanted to make something that is preventive. We wanted to intervene already when people were feeling still okay, when they were not completely panicked or nauseous. 
And also, we wanted to make something that gave control back to the patient, so that does not require any nurse or doctor to intervene. Because especially in the waiting room, you are by yourself just worrying about what's going to happen. Also, one of the benefits of biofeedback is that it's personalized. I can tell you to give, uh, I can tell you to do a breathing exercise, for example, but it might not work for you, even though it might work for me. So the game really helps you to find out what works for you. And what's nice, it's scalable. Everybody has a phone nowadays, so it's easy to distribute an intervention like this. Now, if you want to either know more or collaborate with us or try the game, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us. And of course, I'm not doing this by myself, but with a lot of wonderful collaborators. Anyway, thank you for your attention, and I hope to hear from you soon. Bye.